Good morning, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Sean Patrick from the School of Public Health, Health Systems and Public Health and his team from the University of Pretoria. Sean, you have 10 minutes to present. Over to you. Thank you very much um, for the introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'll be presenting today on assessment to die for. Um, how did Bond survive? Let's go here. Okay, so I'll give a bit of um, just a very brief introduction on using game based learning. We'll talk about the brief, um, rethinking assignments, what the mission was, um, some of the mechanics. We'll get into some of the game scenes to see how we took some of the, um, uh, the scenes and how we uh, presented them. We'll look at some of the reviews because, as you know, with any, any um, Bond game or any movie there are some reviews and whether or not there will be a sequel so that's some of the questions that um, or some of the things that I will cover so because it's not all just fun and games it is actually um, we are on a mission to create smart learning environments and we do know that especially in um, in the current teaching landscape and the changes we are training a new competent public health workforce and it's important to understand what some of these real life um, scenarios are, but also how do we teach um, our students to recognize what some of these um, the research comp components are. So to place it into context, what the, the brief was, was in our postgraduate diploma um, in public health, which is fully online, um, I teach the margin deduction to research methods. And it's quite a it's a difficult module to teach because we're going into the um, the theory behind different uh, research study designs, so quantitative and qualitative research, for example. So how do we take the that can be a potentially a very dry module, use a game based learning approach to um, engage the, um, the 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 student to understand what some of these public health challenges are and redesigning a game that proposes a challenge gives a response and also feedback and using the feedback in the game so they can understand what um, knowledge they need to reinforce but also have some have some fun while doing it at the same time so where do we start? So we looked at in this particular um, game and um, the theory was cognitive constructivism. And if we think of game-based learning smart environments, what we're currently doing with this first step is to use game-based learning as constructivist um, theory. And moving forward, actually starting in the next round, and I'll talk a bit about that later, about participatory study theory, you um, having the students in the class actually maybe co-design one of the scenes to show that they have understood the content in the module and can use this content actually build it into in an act, interactive environment. So the mission. Um, the, the mission really stemmed from an article that was published in 2021 and it detailed um, how James Bond is, is, is exposed to all of these infectious diseases and how he is actually a public health risk. The article is quite quite interesting. It covers six scenes, not seven, which one would expect. And each one of the scenes details a different public health concern, whether it's infectious diseases, vector-borne diseases, waterborne um, waterborne diseases, um, excessive lifestyle. So using the public health um, concerns and overlaying the research methodology the students have been taught, how do you merge these two in a way the students would still be able to have fun? A character that they all know well, they've all watched the movies, how do they then, um, how do we incorporate this uh, article? So I hope my sound works. So what I did, I did a little clip of the um, start. So it's very soft. We overlaid um, the Bond theme theme. Um, students would log in, they would get a first screen, which would then be the, uh, the um, uh, invitation to play the game, they would enter in their name. Um, if they've had enough excitement, um, it's unfortunate for them, they would then just have, they would then get back to the same screen. But they would enter in their name, and they would then be taken into 
the first scene. So each, each one of the scenes, there are the article has six. I had to think of a seventh one because the module has seven weeks. So I used the, the, the latest Bond movie and created a whole scene around that. So when the students would log in, they would see an initial screen to give them the invitation and also a clue to keep some of the, of the codes that they would then need right at, at the end. So they would walk through the scene and the scene would open up. And the first one is around sexual health. The scenes all have an information tab, which tells the student exactly what to expect. And the last to give a hint as it has an escape room that there are many other things they need to be looking for. So figures, patterns, um, messages, and also because it's tied to public health, what are some of the facts around sexual health? We know that um, risky behavior, HIV, AIDS, for, for example, we understand that. So as students would work through, they'd get a scenario-based quick question. The scenario would, 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 would be one of the topics we have covered throughout the module. This one is quantitative research, for example, and the options would be there. After reading, the students would have the option to either choose any uh, any one of any one of these. Um, they've also have an um, if they choose a focus group discussion, for example, which is incorrect because um, you, it leads the student back to the principle. What is the difference between quantitative and qualitative? If you not know, they need to then obviously go back and try and try again until they get the right answer. The image on the left also has stars in, so students will have to count the number of stars. Um, in order to get to a code, for example. Um, in a, another scene, that would be the code. So it will be stars, um, uh, crosses, okay, um, and so on. So when they identified all of these, that would be the code to escape the room. So although it is quite heavily focused on the method or on the, on the, the content, it also has an approach to gaming. And of course, here is is the other scene that has all the other um, the stars and the, the crosses in the crosses in that the students would have to then look at. They would then um, do a count of all of those, while at the same time looking at the question, linking it back to research methods. And this is a, a practical example, a real article that was published, and really trying to think what would be the most appropriate way. So not just remembering the facts, but also being able to, to apply that and then giving the students an opportunity to then complete it. They would then, then type in their code. And when they've typed in the code, they would get a the correct answer. If it's wrong, they have to go back again. And at the end of the scene, there would be a code and that number they would then have to save. So um, this is just an, another example of, of one of the other scenes, specifically around vector-borne diseases, for example. How do we use how do we use that? And I don't want to play everything. I'm going to take you to um, I take you to the last scene. So I had to build the last scene. Um, time. So the last scene was not included in the article at um, at all. Um, so I had to think what would be the last mission. So the latest one, and that's the, the title really, No Time to Die. So building a new scene was around about um, how do we tie all the content over the seven weeks into one last scene? So we created, I created a scene, sort of an eyewitness report um, about all of this, the, the, uh, the the, the evidence in the weeks. So each one of the six weeks would be the missions they've completed and all of the ev evidence they've collected. So the learning are, um, the learning objectives or the outcomes week one to week six would be tied in together in the last scene. They would then go, go back. They would then, um, once they've collected all of the clues, they would then go ahead and they would unlock the room. When they've unlocked the room, we um, I used a drag and drop at the end. Um, take you see my time running out slightly. Yep. They would then use a drag and drop, and after the drag and drop, they would um, drag in the code, drag in the code, and at the end, they would get a little badge that would say they are now the new um, 007 has sadly not made it, so Bond did not survive at all, and they I have replaced him, and they have now completed their mission. 
So if you look at some of the reviews, for example, um, 735 students actually completed the game, an average hour, an hour and 45 minutes. I've just included some of the, 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 the feedback where students really said it gave them genuine examples, so real life examples, they're all based on, on articles. Um, give them a real practical application of what was done in the module, the theoretical content, how that translates into a real life scenario, and by trying to tie in all of the concepts in a practical form. So will there be a sequel? Well, uh, the lessons learned really was that everything, there was generally a positive, there was generally positive feedback. The main component was that um, I put the game in the last week of the, the module. So um, that created quite a heavy workload and um, at the end. So as yes, um, one of the ideas is to split it down per week so that the scene deals with the content of the week. So students can then assess their learning for the week. Distractors and focus more on the, the theory in the module that create a less workload for the summative assessment in the last week. And then um, what the lesson that I've learned personally is that on the level, um, this can this can also be as um, an assessment for, uh, for learning and of learning as well. So that's the Um, the article I used software um, was uh, Storyline 3. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, is there anyone that has a question for Sean? You can raise your hand. Marie, there's a question in the chat uh, from Denise. Um, she asked, how long did it take you to build the content that you took from the article versus the content you built yourself for week seven? Okay. Um, so with the game, I, I built the game over a couple of months, probably. So um, I didn't sit in one um, sitting. It probably, I would say on, on average, I built it over weekends mainly probably two months or so. Um, I'd maybe do one scene per day. Um, Sean, there was also a question okay, about, you. did you ask the students to watch, or in the article, did they ask the students to actually watch the video or only um, do, look at the scenes that you have created? I'm talking about the Bond movie so, video. Um, <laughs> No, so so what I what I did because remember this this is the first time that we uh, that I've introduced this in the module, so I thought as a start, do the um the game first and then I I did add in the reference to the article. The article is quite short, so the article has one paragraph on each one of the scenes. So I had to be a little bit more creative and just use the theme. So for example, the first one that I showed you was about um sexual risk. The paragraph was quite small, but I just sort of think, how do I take a study? Okay, I think I've lost your last word. Um, mm -hmm. um, okay, oh, um, I, I said it, um, in the module, I did just um, I, I did refer the students back to the article if they wanted to read it, but the article did not have as much detail in as as the game itself. The game okay. had a bit more detail in. Okay. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, and everybody, mm -hmm. we can give him a virtual hand mm -hmm. for that um, and for, for <laughs> all you. the work into that presentation. Um, this is the end of the session. To go to the next session, you must please leave the session and go to the program and log into the next session that you want to um, listen to. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.